morning my darlings welcome to a new vlog as you can tell from, by my very lush and green surroundings we are back home we are back in the country actually technically not home yet we flew in to Heathrow last night so we decided to spend the evening with Charlie's mum and dad it is also Charlie's nan's 90th birthday this weekend so we have a little bit of a celebration we started off our Saturday Sunday morning with a really lovely walk around Windsor Park and behind me there is a pair of very regal stags. I don't think I've ever seen them quite so up close and personal before. Aside from of course when I met Rudolph at Dalesford just before Christmas last year. Um, but we're going to blow away the cobwebs, stretch our legs with a nice walk this morning, get a sausage bap at Savile Garden and then it's back to Charlie's parents for a little birthday celebration. Side by side we sway there in all the colours My darlings, it is now bank holiday Monday morning after a really, really lovely family day yesterday. We're now back home and it feels good to be home. We have not been in our own home in eight days because of our trip to Abu Dhabi. Just gonna rest you up there to save my arms. Um, yeah, it's so nice to be home. I am getting kick-started with my usual Monday morning routine here at Dalesford for Reformer Pilates, which I'm very excited for. My under eye area looks and feels super dehydrated. So I've got my one, one, one little under eye patches on. Hopefully they're gonna work their magic. Um, so because it is the August bank holiday, there is lots going on in the Cotswolds this weekend. I've driven past at least three um, signs for village fates. I think I'm going to go to obviously our village church fate, which is today, and also Ascot and Witchwood, which are two neighbouring villages fairly close to us have got their fate and flower show, which sounds very up my street. So I think I'll go to those later. Um, we have got a meeting at the house this morning. I have a load of washing to do. I have a lot of gardening I need to do after being away for so long, um, well, a week. And everything has grown massive. The cosmos down in the kitchen garden are nearly as tall as I am. There's a lot of flowers to be picked. There's a lot of courgettes to be picked. There's a lot of beans to be picked. Oh, and I've got so many things to unbox as well. So today is going to be a busy day. So I'm very happy to be getting started with a little bit of me time doing a Pilates and I'm going to do a quick food shop in Dalesford after the class. I've just been listening, how long have I got? Three minutes. Just listened to a Sheer Lux podcast on my way here. Um, and I'm just going to tell you guys, partly so that I don't forget, two books that I'm going to order on Amazon for our holiday to Kefalonia. Um, Sharp Objects is one that they were talking about that sounds really good. And a book called, I think it's called Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to be ordering those two for our upcoming Kefalonia trip. And then they were also talking about a documentary about, do you remember the the school group that got stuck in the caves in Thailand, um, I think in 2017. So there is an Amazon Prime documentary about that called 13 Lives. Not sure if you can download stuff on Amazon Prime, but next month or at the end of September, 
I've got a very long haul flight, so I'm going to try and download loads of stuff for that. So if you guys have got any recommendations of things that I can download to watch on a very long haul flight, please let me know. Anyway, two minutes until Pilates starts, so let's go and I'll catch up with you. Oh, I don't need this strap on here anymore. I don't have time for this. Oh, for goodness sake. Right, let's go. home again after a lovely Pilates class. I don't know why I'm struggling with the, <laughs> the daylight today. Um, I think I have explained in the past I have got very light sensitive eyes ever since my laser eye surgery. Um, anyway that was a digression. Really good Pilates class and then I got a few essentials from Dalesford this morning. We've just had a great meeting at the house and I'm now going to head into the kitchen garden to find some ingredients for my lunch. I think I'm going to do a baked courgette because I think we've got some fairly large courgettes that are going to need eating. Um, but while we were away we did have a few things done at the house. We've had a lot of electrics put in outside for outdoor lighting, to light up trees, to create more kind of lit walkways because when the evenings get longer in the winter, it's just pitch black out here and as well as being light sensitive, I'm also really bad at seeing in the dark. So we just need a little bit more illumination in the garden. So there's now lots of um, kind of electric areas where we can have outdoor lighting put in, which is gonna be fantastic. And the greenhouse is looking a little bit messy because we have also had um, the Nicholson's chaps, Pete and Neil have been here starting to build my stone wall supports, which is where the shelving is going to go. So we've got one on that side, and two on this side. So we're going to have the living edge wood shelf going on here. So that's been done. Let me grab, what do I need? These are quite good picking courgettes. There's a lot of gardening I want to do, quite a lot of deadheading needs doing, lots of roses to deadhead. Everything has grown very well. Um, which just means lots more work for me in the garden over the next week or so. I think we've got some nice weather for gardening. I actually thought the pumpkins might have grown a little bit more over the last week. They've got a few more weeks of growing before I'll harvest them. Lots of strawberries looking very bright and colourful, ready to be snoffled. And we've got lots of raspberries coming on this bush as well, which is exciting. Lots of little raspberries over there. The seedlings, which I planted just before going, they are looking good, doing well. And it's this courgette plant over here that I'm pretty sure... Oh yes, look at that. There's my lunch right there. Wow, it looks like Lala or somebody else has harvested a big one while we've been away. But this is the perfect size for my lunch. There we go, and there's a couple more, one, two, three. Still growing, as the plant gets older, it meanders further and further away from where it's actually growing. We'll have courgettes draping over the edge of here before too long. I notice some new pumpkins. Oh, look, so this is what happens. Can you see the purple through there? When the artichoke starts to flower and become like a thistle flower. We've got a really fun looking pumpkin down there. Let's have a little peek. Or is this a courgette? I can't remember. Wow, that's exciting. Lots of these smaller little pumpkins starting to grow. Oh, I can see a really nice coloured one. Can you see that down there? Little stripy one. Going to be rather beautiful. Another artichoke starting to flower. And look at the cosmos. They have got so tall. The gladioli looking absolutely beautiful. Oh, after lunch, I'm definitely going to spend some time down here in the garden. These double cupcake cosmos are just absolutely beautiful. So many lovely dahlias looking absolutely spectacular. Got lots of picking to do. My favourite, this is the Cafe Ole dinner plate dahlia. And then the slightly more creamy version over here. I mean, look at that. Nature is just amazing, isn't it? And this is a new one. I'm going to call this my raspberry dahlia. Look at that. Absolutely stunning. Such gorgeous kind of sunset colours. Looks like we've got a couple more to come out there as well. This is definitely going to keep me busy. 
over the next week or so. Lots of tidying, deadheading, flower picking, pumpkin picking. Are you okay, my lovely boy? Look at what these birds are doing, making a mess of your kitchen garden, Dixie. Now, something that I've never actually done anything with is trying to cook with the actual courgette flour, and this one is so perfect. So I'm gonna have a little look at some courgette flour recipes as well. recipes that don't require you to submerge the flowers in oil which I always just think is such a waste of oil or have an air fryer which I do not have. Most of the recipes are actually Greek which is fabulous because we are going to the Greek islands next week. Um, so I think I'm going to try this recipe. It's basically a rice filled um, courgette flour and I love rice so I've got some rice boiling at the moment. I'm going to use the actual courgette to make a courgette kind of rice and then stuff a few courgette flowers. So I'm actually going to need a few more. So I'm gonna head back into the garden, collect a few more flowers, take the pollen out of the middle, give them a bit of a rinse through, um, and then by that time, hopefully my rice will be ready so I can stuff them, cook them for 20 minutes or so, and try a new dish. So this is a little bit of an experiment, but this is going to be my mixture for inside running out of olive oil, just adding some olive oil into a pan. You might remember when I chop an onion but only use half of it, I chop the other half, um, oh, can't get into it, and freeze it in a stasher bag, which comes in very, very handy when you only need a little bit. That should be perfect. It won't take long for this to defrost and start to cook. I'll give that a few moments. I'm gonna grab a few herbs from the garden as well. Oh my gosh, there is a spider in my frying pan. <sighs> ah, the joys of living in an old house. You would have been a fried spider if I hadn't just blown you away. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to add some salt and pepper, herbs, um, my rice, and hopefully that will be tasty enough to add to the to add as a stuffing to my courgette flour. I did end up doing a little bit more rice than I needed, so I've actually been snacking on the leftover courgette rice while these have been in the oven. Um, but with a little bit of, randomly I decided to put some nutritional yeast and parmesan on the top. They smell delicious, so I'm gonna tuck in and I shall report back. Well, that was positively delicious, a scrumptious recipe. I shared a little photo on my Instagram stories as well, and lots of you have recommended other fried um, courgette flour recipes. So typical, just as the courgette season starts to come to an end, um, but lots to look forward to next year, and I'm sure we'll have a few more courgette flowers to play with. But anyway, now I'm gonna head down to our church fate in the village. My brother is here with my little nephews, so we're gonna all go down as a family. So let's go and check it out. We said we were the good ones. Wow, how many can you see us in? Like an 18 minute thriller movie. How many are there? I always knew you always meant it. But now we're standing on the best side, too. Get it like you said it's alright 
Austin. Come on, everyone's gonna have a go. Come on, I'll go. Everyone then, Brandon. Brandon. Is breaking from his misery. Okay, so after a lovely couple of hours at the church fete, the boys had great fun doing the treasure hunt and playing all the tombola games. I have now bought a load of fresh water glasses down to the cut flower area and my gloves and some scissors. I'm going to be doing a whole lot of flower picking and a whole lot of deadheading. These flowers should continue, especially dahlias and cosmos. The more you pick them, the more they grow back and the bigger they grow back, as you can tell by my cosmos. Um, and that'll just continue until the first frost probably. So this really is the best time of year for flower picking and I have never seen so many blooms as we have right now. So this is gonna be a busy flower picking session not really too sure where to start there's quite a few cosmos that have gone a bit over as well if you leave them then all the energy from the flower just goes into producing seeds um, so we want to pick these dead heads which makes everywhere look a little bit more tidy and also produces more energy for the actual flowers <laughs> My goodness, I have only done about a third of the dahlias and I've already filled all of my little vases. These are quite possibly the biggest dahlias I've ever seen. That is about the size of a football. <laughs> Absolutely ginormous. We've got the beautiful cream ones, the blush pinks, this fabulous raspberry one, the deep purples. Oh my goodness. The dahlias, it's safe to say, absolutely love it down here. There's still so many more. Haven't even started on the cosmos or the sweet peas or the gladioli. Oh my goodness. I have got my work cut out for me this afternoon. As has this little Waspy, you've got some pollen stuck to your foot, young man. He's got pollen stuck to his little leggies. Driving in the backseat. What's left of me? Drowning in what feels just like an ocean. Negativity is getting closer. How to keep the human it gets colder, you know. Sometimes everything just gets hard. Okay, I've probably spent around 45 minutes pottering down here in the cut flower garden. I've got lots of dead heads ready to go on the compost heap and a lovely selection. This is my second tray of blooms to go into the house. So many cosmos, loads of gladioli, loads of dahlias, sweet peas. It is endless. I could, I should 
have taken loads of vases down to the church fete if we hadn't have been away last week. I would have been a little bit more organised, but I'm remembering all these things so that I can do them better next year. There are even dahlias here that I didn't know we had that are starting to be late bloomers. And I have to say as well, the bumblebees are so fat. <laughs> they are, can you see that one over there? The bumblebees in this garden obviously have just had so much pollen. Look how fluffy that guy is, he's ginormous. Look, you are the biggest bumblebee. That is one seriously fluffy bottom. Hello. I'm providing you with too much pollen and you're getting very chunky, Mr. Bumblebee. You enjoy that cosmos. Look at him go. He's so busy. He doesn't mind me being here at all. You're so fluffy. Look at that fluffy bottom. What was I saying? Oh yes, there's dahlias here that I didn't even know we had, a completely different kind. This one's got a really fluffy middle and then petals on the outside. Oh, it's almost like, oh, that needs to get pulled off. It's almost as though two different types of dahlias have merged into one. Don't know if that can happen underground. I think my next plan, this um, wildflower turf area is obviously very overgrown, but some of the pieces in here are actually really beautiful for potential autumnal flower displays. So I might just come down here with the big um, vase that goes in the entrance hall and do a really fabulous structural display for autumn. I can hear some rustling over here. Is it Dickens or is it the sheep? Lots of apples coming down on the tree. Oh, it's a little sheep. And our fruit trees that are new this year are bearing some fruit. We've got some apples. We did pull most of it off. Look, see all of this really tall wildflower could make for some fabulous displays in the house and might dry out beautifully where it's all fallen down, where it's got too big and heavy. That's the perfect excuse to chop it. Right. Lots of apples growing here on this one. Lots of pears on the pear tree. And these anemones behind the fountain are just so delicate and beautiful. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So I've just grabbed this from the entrance hall table. This is going to be my last little job, aside from maybe a bit more deadheading before I go inside and do some unpacking and put some loads of washing on. So as a reminder, when you are picking the dried flowers, obviously they don't start out dry and they tend to dry out better if they're not completely dehydrated straight away. So I have got some water in there. Adding some chicken wire into your vases is a really good way, I need to scrunch it up wearing some gloves, a really great way of creating that structure so that everything doesn't just flop to one side, everything has a bit more support if it's um, sitting in the holes from the chicken wire. So I'm going to pop that in there, then I'm going to grab a selection of bits from the wildflower area and hopefully make a display which should dry out beautifully and add a slightly more autumnal touch to our entrance hall area, which is currently filled with boxes as Charlie does some unboxing. This is how it looks with just the one type of wildflower grass in there and actually I quite like how it looks just with the really simple green and white, mostly green. So I think I'm actually just going to stop here. I really like the shape that these have created. It's a really nice large structure. Um, I think I'll probably do some 
big autumnal kind of branches next time but I'm gonna leave this as it is we'll see how it dries out hopefully it'll just go nice and crispy but you never know sometimes things might wilt and look a bit sad but hopefully this will last a week or so and we'll see how they do as dried flowers after an afternoon in the garden I look a little bit disheveled but um, never mind I now need to do a little bit of unpacking which is probably the worst job in the entire world isn't it so to cheer myself up before doing some unpacking I thought I would do a little bit of unboxing because there have been some fun deliveries while we've been away some of which I'm very excited to try out. I thought I would just whiz through a few of them with you. You may remember my favorite serum of all time is the Clé de Peau Le Serum. It is just so incredible. And they have released a new serum called the Brightening Serum Supreme. What magic will this do, I wonder? A concentrated brightening serum to revive skin's inherent radiance. A skin empowering illuminator helps with dark spots and dullness. That sounds amazing. So I wonder how I mix this with my Le Serum. I'm imagining that you use Le Serum and then you use the Brightening Serum Supreme, which looks like this afterwards. I normally like to present you guys with more affordable alternatives, but I have to say Clé de Peau's Le Serum is the one really expensive product that I will just continue to repurchase because it is so, so effective. So I'm looking forward to giving that a go and I shall report back whether I think it is worth the price tag. Speaking of luxury beauty products, I really wish that I had shown you all of this this morning when I had a fresh face of makeup and not after an entire day in the garden. We have a little delivery here from Dior. I think this might be their autumn winter makeup collection. Any of these products which I end up falling in love with, you'll probably see me using in daily makeup routines, but let's have a little look. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Fortifying cream for nails. I've had this before and it is really, really lovely. It's a very chic little pot to have on your bedside tables. It's basically a very, I'm not gonna undo this because I have still got one that is not finished yet on my bedside table. It's basically like a thick Vaseline type of product um, and you can pop it on your nail beds, on your cuticles and it really helps to strengthen them. Refillable floral lip care. Oh, I like the sound of floral lip care. Ooh. Oh my gosh. 
gosh, that is, you're not gonna be able to see this, but that is the most beautiful, almost like powdery red. Stunning. Wow, I hope that's not too drying. That is absolutely beautiful. <gasps> I'm always so happy when I see wearable colors. Very similar shades every single day. Always a type of brown, a type of nude, and that is just absolutely gorgeous. Perfect autumnal colors. I'm gonna leave that out and try that in the morning. And then another floral lip care in the shade Rosewood. A deeper brownie pink. Gosh, this is getting me excited for autumn. Up next, I have got a few products here from a brand called Inur. 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 And it says here, Inur follows a philosophy based on chrono beauty, where each product works perfectly in sync with the skin's natural rhythm. Overnight, the skin cells Renewal is boosted and the highest number of cell divisions occurs between midnight and 1 a.m. At night, there are optimal conditions for our skin to absorb the largest amount of active ingredients. So we've got a few different night shots here. The replenish night shot to hydrate and plump your skin. That sounds, that sounds amazing. Aloe vera is a multitasker to combat the daily stresses. A nourishing powerhouse with a rich dose of nutrients and vitamins plumps and gives an enviable glow. I love the idea of adding a shot of whatever ingredients your skin needs into your nighttime routine. And then this one here is the Realign Night Shot to balance and protect your skin, containing pre and probiotics, reinforcing your skin's barrier, giving you a more even skin tone upon waking, and the Renew Sleeping Mask to replenish, nourish, and illuminate your skin at night. I love discovering new skincare brands and I'm, I think the idea of these night shots is such a great idea. So I shall give this a go and again, report back to you. This is so nice. This is a delivery from Code 8. They've just written a note to say, Josie, we saw that your lipstick got broken and knowing that you love that shade, we wanted to send you a replacement. That is so kind. <laughs> My favorite Code 8 lipstick. I don't think it broke, I think it melted. Um, so maybe I have a top up here. They have so kindly sent over these two beautiful shades. I don't think either of these is actually the one that I have been wearing lately that melted. So I'm gonna have to find the exact shade name. This is shade number 11 and that is a really beautiful pinky lipstick. And then this one is more of a kind of a matte coral red that looks beautiful that could be a really gorgeous summer holiday lipstick so this is actually a new lipstick called the evie dove lipstick they're donating 20 percent of the proceeds to the evie dove foundation sponsoring the education of pediatric medical professionals that is a really lovely idea that's definitely going to be my kefalonia holiday lipstick color i was wrong this is the same shade it's l1 I thought this was a lot more corally. This is my one which melted, but that is correct. <laughs> Sorry, Code 8, I thought you got it wrong, but you were completely spot on. L1 is the shade that I have been loving wearing lately, and they're so balmy. Just the perfect summer holiday lipsticks. <laughs> except for my melted one. A few skincare products here from Dr. Hauschka. I believe these are actually all natural, yeah, 100% certified natural cosmetics. I didn't realize this was a natural brand. Um, we've got their Rose Nurturing Body Oil. This sounds perfect after a week in scorching Abu Dhabi temperatures. I think that could be a really gorgeous product to apply before bed. We've got their shower cream with lemon and lemongrass. That sounds like it's gonna smell heavenly. And a soothing cleansing milk makeup remover. Ideal for makeup removal or as a shaving lotion. With jojoba and almond oil to cleanse and sensitivities are calmed and redness is cooled. Do you know what? I'm so brain dead and tired <laughs> that I know that I'm not doing this unboxing any justice. I'm not telling you anything interesting about the products. So there's no point in me doing any more. I am just gonna put a YouTube video on in the background. I'm listening to more random 60 minute Australia stories. I'm gonna do 20 minutes, try and blitz my suitcase, get as much unpacking done as possible. Um, and then I think I'm just gonna catch up with you guys in the morning or just make this a very short vlog. It's probably not that short, is it? 
I don't know, I can't even make the decision right now <laughs> whether this is gonna be a two or three day vlog. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna get on with my unpacking. Heart wasn't 